Welcome back to Business Ethics. My name is Tom, and in this unit, we are going to talk about Aristotle and Aristotle's application to business ethics. Um, first, I'm going to say a little bit about um, Aristotle's virtue ethics and the kind of ethical paradigm he's working with, and then I will move on to its application to business ethics, which I think is, is, is a lot. Um, the thing about Aristotle in this unit is that um, Aristotle does not weigh in so heavily on the central debate that we've been talking about, for, um, about you know, profit first views of business versus um, purpose first views of business. Um, but what you do get out of Aristotelian virtue ethics is a model that lots of businesses tend to use um, implicitly. Um, Aristotle in some ways um, outlines a lot of what we consider to be common sense ethics, and um, but uh, there's a lot of substance to it. Um, so first, let me say something about you know Aristotle is a virtue ethicist, um, and virtue ethics is unique um, in that virtue ethics is focused on being a good person. Right, it's about developing moral character. Um, so the central unit of ethical evaluation is the person, right, or um, a person's character, as opposed to um, a lot of other ethical theories. Some that we won't really focus on that much. That really focus focus on actions, right? So their unit, they want to know: is this the right or wrong thing to do? Um, and Aristotle wants to know more about what it is to become a good person. Um, and we'll see, this is very important when it comes to, you know, companies that want to develop good ethical culture, right? They want to know what it is to be a good business and have longevity and have a healthy workplace as opposed to just dealing with a particular situation, right? So anyways, to get back to Aristotle, it's himself, you know, um, he, he's a virtue ethicist. Um, and uh, it's called virtue ethics because um, he's concerned with what it is to develop and facilitate virtues, to be a virtuous person. Um, now, one thing that he's working with that's good to point out here is a, a teleological conception of um, human action and behavior. Um, teleology is really the study of the aim or purpose of a thing. Now that's part of the debate that we've been talking about, right? What is the real purpose of a business or what is the real central um, focus of success when it comes to a business? And, you know, obviously profit is one um, measure of a business, but another one is, you know, its purpose or its um, uh, social impact. Um, but um, here, you know, we're talking more generally about the purpose or aim of a human being. Right. And for Aristotle, this aim is um, human flourishing or human excellence. And uh, the Greek term for this that he focuses on is called eudaimonia. Now, eudaimonia is sometimes translated as happiness, but it's very different from our current conception of happiness. Um, we tend to think of happiness as a feeling right? Um, a sentiment that you get sometimes when something good happens, right? Um, eudaimonia is a little deeper than that. It really has to do with um, a kind of deep sense of satisfaction in doing the right thing. And it's kind of more like gen, we might really call it genuine happiness, right? So some people translate it as human flourishing, Right, so it's kind of more happiness in the sense that um, when you have a good family and you're fulfilling your duties in that family and your social roles and um, you're satisfied with the work you're doing and all these kinds of things, that kind of satisfaction is really more like what eudaimonia is. Um, now, Aristotle has an interesting argument about why ethics is so important. And he really thinks that this idea of eudaimonia and happiness really underlies and structures all of our lives, right? The reason why we do anything is because we think it's good, right? Um, and we, you know, we invest ourselves and our actions in the things that we think are good and right, 
right? And the things that will really genuinely make us happy. And so, so uh, Aristotle argues that ethics is the most important thing for us as human beings to study because it, the good and the right is kind of the most important thing for us, right? Um, so, so I have some things about this in my notes. Um, but here's kind of, um, you know, so yes, Aristotle's concerned with um, being a good person and moral character and developing that moral character. But here are the things that are really kind of more, um, um, uh, what would you say, pressing or important or more of a commitment on his end. Um, the first thing is that ethics for him is a practice. It's a practical matter right? Um, being ethical is something that you do and something that you have to work hard at doing. Um, and it's something that you can develop, right? This runs counter to a lot of views where they want to get the right ethical theory. And they think if you get the right ethical theory, then you will act in the right sort of way. Aristotle thinks, no, you don't even have to be a good person. You just have to start doing the right thing. And eventually you will develop that moral character. Um, and this is akin to like all kinds of other practical skills, right? If you wanna be a good guitarist, you have to start playing guitar. You don't learn all the music theory and then start playing, right? Um, if you wanna be a good um, you know, painter or a good public speaker or something, you start doing it, you have to practice it, right? And that's the way you develop any skill. And Aristotle thinks that being ethical is a skill, right? You're, mm, practicing uh, your human virtue and you're developing it over time, right? Um, and um, part of this also is that um, he's going to advocate for all kinds of things to develop those skills, right? So moral education and um, um, hanging out with moral people and having good um, role models and um, you know, um, participating in certain activities and all kinds of things like this, right? Um, so for him, it's a whole context of developing moral character that's really, really fundamental to our lives. I mean, just think about, you know, your own life, you know, um, the role that your, your parents or the people who raised you have and your schooling and religion and all these kinds of things really factor into shaping your character, right? And so Aristotle thinks we need to pay attention to that. Um, and also uh, Aristotle has this famous kind of mean, um, which is interesting. He thinks that, you know, being virtuous is finding a balance between extremes. And in fact, he thinks that the virtues themselves exhibit uh, a mean between these extremes, right? So for example, courage is itself a mean. Um, if you have too much courage, um, you're a fool, right? So if, you know, you run out to fight, you know, 25 armed people, right? You're not really courageous. You're kind of stupid, right? Um, and, uh, but if you never stand up to anyone, then you're not courageous either, right? So it's about being, um, showing, you know, standing up in the right sorts of ways and the right sorts of context, right? Um, and same with uh, honor and other um, uh, virtues where, you know, honor is good and it's good to pursue honor and to have honor in your, uh, the way you conduct yourself. But if you're always pursuing honor um, and you pursue it too much, then actually it looks like you're, mm, self-absorbed or you're, um, you know, um, always looking for recognition and your own self-worth is based on how other people view you and you're kind of self-seeking, right? Whereas um, if you never pursue honor, then you just lack honor in your, um, in, in the way you um, conduct yourself, right? So um, this is an interesting aspect to um, Aristotle's theory. Now, what I want to focus on here is when it comes to business. Um, Aristotle's virtue ethics really ex are exemplified in lots of businesses. For, for one, um, lots of businesses focus on a virtue 
as a main value, like in their code of conduct and stuff like this. We'll read um, Coca-Cola's code of conduct and theirs is all about integrity. Everything centers around integrity. So this idea of picking a virtue and trying to foster it and develop it is one that lots of businesses have, have jumped onto, right? Um, and, um, and also, you know, this idea that Aristotle has of, um, you know, ethics being something that you practice and that you facilitate is one that really matches up to lots of businesses that are trying to be ethical, right? Um, you know, what you have to do is you have to have a lot of different components. And we'll talk about the different aspects to an ethics um, program, but it's about um, having all of those things up and running and facilitating them all at the same time, right? Um, a good uh, metaphor for eudaimonia and the kind of human excellence that Aristotle's after is health. Right. Health is about balancing all kinds of things at the same time. Right. You have to sleep well. You have to eat well. You have to exercise. Um, you have to not get to have too much stress. You need to balance all these kinds of things. Right. Um, and um, Aristotle's model here can be used in a business uh, in the sense of, you know, um, having all kinds of moving parts and practices, you know, um, going at the same time. Right. Like having um, a good good lines of communication, having ways for um, employees to be able to report things, um, making sure that they feel comfortable reporting those things, um, having clear um, ways in which you, um, you know, have uh, solutions or punishment or whatever it is, um, distributing those equally, um, you know, uh, having good training, having good onboarding, um, uh, you know, all those kinds of things. Um, for, for Aristotle's view, you know, if you want to apply that to business, Aristotle thinks you need to do all these things and you need to constantly be working on them uh, and improving them. So, um, so, so that's why I think um, Aristotle's view is important to read and it's a good, um, what would you say, ethical framework to use when you're looking at businesses and looking at some of the things that we'll cover in the units moving forward. And, um, and uh, so that's it for now. Um, uh, thanks for watching and I'll talk with you soon.